Hey guys, welcome back. Um, you know, I was just um, getting a little excited the other day. Uh, you know, Xenoblade's coming out here in a little bit, and I don't know if we're going to get the whole box set with the red controller or not. So, I went ahead and went out and got one of these, because I, uh, I do plan on playing uh, Monster Hunter Try here again here pretty soon, starting that back up. And um, I wanted to get a good classic controller. And you know, just holding this in my hand and playing it, it, it got me really thinking about how much I love controllers. And you know, we're living in an age now with like, you know, the Wii's motion controls and the PlayStation Move and the Kinect, and even with um, iPhones, you know, just touch controls. We're really living in an age where I think controllers are going to be kind of disappearing. And that really, it kind of saddens me because, you know, ever since I can remember, I've had a controller in my hand. And so I want to do a video today talking about controllers and I, I, I've been thinking about this video for a long time now and I think the best way to do it is just to do it by game companies in general because you know there's there's just too many controllers out there when you really get into like you know talking about Sega's controllers and the PC Engine controller and stuff like that I think I just want to kind of keep this focused on Nintendo because when I think of innovation in controls I always think of Nintendo because really when you look back on it, Nintendo controllers have basically set the bar for this entire post-crash, you know, game universe. You know, it influences every generation that they're in. Um, that's one of the great things about Nintendo is that they're always thinking ahead and always thinking of new ways to, you know, control your games. And that goes all the way back all the way back, I have literally like miles of controller rope over here, of controller cable, so um, bear with me while I try to navigate it. But that goes all the way back to this thing. And of course, you know, by today's standards, this is as archaic, almost as archaic as you can get. But unlike, you know, say the Atari 2600 controls, this thing still works fantastically. And it's hard to think of video gaming without this little thing right here. And this is kind of Nintendo's big claim to fame, is that they were, as far as I can remember, you know, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, they were the originators of the D-pad um, with the Game & Watch, you know, games. And then they just incorporated it here on the, um, the NES controller. And, you know, you have to really, it's hard to think about this now, but back in the day, this was actually a very um, complex controller. You know, think about the Atari 2600 controller, you know, one joystick, one button, you know. Some of the other controllers, you know, now that I think about, like, the Intellivision and things like that, you know, the ones that had the number pads on it, those were a little bit complex. But, you know, this, you know, four buttons and the D-pad, you know, for it's, you know, look at it now, it's very simplistic, but for all this simplicity, you get a lot of function out of this. You know, think about all the different games you play on the NES with this. You know, think about if this controller never came out, actually. You know, really run that through your head. Without this D-pad here, think about how we'd be playing games nowadays. Like, we'd probably still have controllers with, well, I mean, it's gone back to um, control sticks anyway, analog sticks. But, you know, for a long time, I still really like the D-pad, so, you know, I, I don't have any problems with it. But, um, a really innovative controller, because you have to look at it. You know, the Sega Master System, essentially the same controller. PC Engine, essentially the same controller. I mean, what Nintendo did with this little, you know, and this isn't really, you know, I shouldn't be using this. I sh if I had a Super Famicom, I'd use a Super Famicom, or a Super Famicom, a regular Famicom controller. Because that was even a little bit more complex, because the, the second controller didn't have the start and select buttons. It had a microphone in it, or um, a speaker. But anyway, you know, for as simple as this is, it's hard to imagine, you know, how innovative this really was. Um, so, you know, this came out. And then, of course, you know, the big rival, Sega, decided that they're, oh, we're going to one-up that. So, what they do? 
They they don't have the select button. Take away that select button. I should have brought the Sega Genesis controller out for this, but whatever. But they don't have the select button, but they did add another action button. So they had start, uh, a D-pad, start, and three buttons. Well, Nintendo was going to have none of that. You know, they, they were like, three buttons, we'll show you. And they made this. And to this day, I still think this is one of the best controllers ever devised. Um, and if you want to, you know, see why I think this is one of the best controllers ever made, look at your Xbox 360 controller. Definitely look at your PlayStation anything controller. Basically, this is what it is. Um, good lord. Um, when I saw this thing for the first time, I really didn't know what to make of it because I'm used to, you know, just two buttons, two action buttons. Sega Genesis had three. Nintendo's like, well, we'll add two more face buttons, and then here's another innovation. Triggers. Up to this point, I, I can't remember a controller that had triggers. And, you know, looking at it, it seems like such a you know, such a no-brainer to put buttons up here. I mean, you got your fingers up here on the controller anyway, so why not have buttons up there? I mean, you know, it's just it, that's the thing about Nintendo. It's just like it's just so friggin' simple that it, you know, Nintendo is really the apple of its day. You know, these things like it's just so friggin' simple, and it makes so much sense that you would think someone else would have thought of it, but. Nintendo was really the ones that really innovated this. And, you know, we had the, the Super Famicom controller, and then, of course, the American version, the Super Nintendo controller. I don't know what the PAL region was like. I don't know if you had, like, the, the X and the Y buttons, same as the A and B buttons, but here in America we had, you know, concave and convex buttons to tell the difference. And this ugly, you know, ugly color here. This was a lot better. But anyway, the Super Nintendo controller was, it's still to this day, my favorite controller of all time. It's just, it's comfortable in the hand. It's got the right size for my hand size. And, um, really, when you look at it, you know, because the Sony PlayStation started out as a Super Nintendo add-on. So when Sony made their controller, which is the DualShock 3 here, um, there's really not much difference there. I mean, the face buttons are kind of the same. You know, you got your D-pad over here. Um, ignore the, the control sticks here because they weren't originally on the um, the PlayStation um, controller. I don't have an old school one that doesn't have the control sticks. And then, you know, the shoulder buttons. I mean, Sony pretty much carbon copied this thing when they made their controller, the original controller. They just put little handles down here on the bottom to kind of change how you hold it. But, um, good lord. I mean, even... You know, when this came out and, you know, it was fully able to do Street Fighter, Sega had to make a new controller to be able to play Street Fighter correctly, you know, with six buttons. So, I mean, Nintendo was really thinking ahead back in the day. And speaking of thinking ahead, we're going to come to what some people consider to be one of the best controllers and some people really hate. That's the N64 controller. Um, you know really a lot of innovation in this controller and a lot of innovation but also a little bit of not forward thinking okay because if you look at this you got your d-pad here you got your control stick here and you got your buttons over here you could tell that Nintendo was not a hundred percent sure that the analog stick was going to take off why because it's in the middle if you look at the Hori um, Oh, I can't remember the name of it. It's like the Hori Mini Pad or something like that. They moved the control stick over to a more comfortable... I should probably film this a little bit different, but a more comfortable um, over here. Um, so you can tell that the D-pad, while it's still kind of prominent on the end there, they were still thinking that the D-pad was going to be the, the main thing that you use, and the control stick was kind of an experiment. They are experimenting with this. But um, it's amazing how much this little stick really changed things because like like I said when Sony first released the PlayStation they had a straight controller like the Super Nintendo when the Saturn released their you know system Sega released the Saturn you know their controller didn't have a stick it wasn't until Nintendo went whole hog and put a stick 
on their controller that these two companies sat up and was like, oh, 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 we might need that. And then they copied it, you know. So a lot of innovation in this controller. It, I, I will admit it is a very ugly controller. Um, just, you know, at the time I thought it was really cool looking, but now looking back on it, you know, you could tell that um, while a lot of thought went into it, of course, it, it just wasn't refined. I think that's the thing that drives me nuts about this controller is it's not refined. It almost feels like a prototype. But, you know, a lot of good, great things about it. Now, like I said, there's a couple steps back. Like, you know, Nintendo only put one stick on it and then they had these, you know, camera buttons. If these were really, which, you know, most games didn't use these as camera buttons, but if this was really going to be a camera button, shouldn't there have been another stick here? Well, you know, they thought it, they, they thought it through. But that's okay. Um, another great innovation is, um, I'm not going to talk about the Z button, because the Z button is essentially just your L button over there. Big deal. Was this controller pack slot. Um, as far as I know, this is the first controller where you could put your memory card in. And um, I actually really like this. I like this idea. I like the VMUs on the Dreamcast controller, and I like the slots on the original Xbox controller. I really think that's something that needs to be brought back to be able to put your your um, your own memory card into your controller. I think that's a great thing because everybody can just you know do their own thing because you know like the PlayStation Two only had two memory card slots. Well, with this everybody can have their own memory card. Really a really great forward-thinking idea. But, um, yeah, the N64 controller, you know, it gets a lot of flack now, you know, for good reason, obviously. But, you know, it did bring a lot of stuff to modern-day gaming. Which brings me to what is essentially the refinement of the N64 controller. And it's a wonderful refinement. Unfortunately, the only thing I have to show you is the WaveBird. I don't have the original... Um, GameCube controller to show you, but the WaveBird, uh, you know, my friends and I have had huge arguments about which is the more comfortable, comfortable controller, the WaveBird or the Xbox 360 controller. They keep saying, you know, Xbox 360 is the most comfortable controller out there. No. Um, we had a little argument, so I brought my WaveBird, and we did, you know, taste tests, if you will, and this thing just melts into your hand, um, almost to the point that it's so comfortable that it, you kind of forget what you're doing. I mean, it's just, it melts into your hand, literally. Um, the only problem with this controller is the Z button here. That is a terrible place for a button. I would almost want another button down here. Just have like an A button, have four buttons surrounding the A button. I think that probably would have been a better idea. Um, the buttons themselves, I wish it was just the A button and then four face buttons around like the X, the X and Ys. You know, a lot of people didn't like this, but I did like the big A button, but I thought the little B button was kind of stupid. And then this really needed to have a nub on the top of it, like the, the main um, control stick. But other than that, I never had a problem with this controller. I mean, you know, the buttons are a little weird, but you, you've... You figure it out. You know you have to do that with every Nintendo controller because they change their controller so much that you it, it's a, an adventure in and of itself learning the new control schemes. But I always had a problem with that Z button there. I don't know what I don't know. That was just kind of well, let's just throw a Z button on there. But um, definitely one of Nintendo's best controllers. I definitely need to go out and get some more of these in case this thing eventually dies. I need to get some basic controllers because. This is the only way to play Smash Brothers. Um, I tried playing it on a classic controller. I tried to play it with the Wii controller. This is the only way to play Smash Brothers, in my opinion. So, but it's definitely, you know, a refinement of the N64 controller. Which, if you look at it, they're very, very similar, except for you know some ba basic aesthetic stuff. Just take out that middle slot and move the control stick around, and basically you got the, almost the same controller. But, um, you know, the GameCube controller, probably the most comfortable controller out there. So, you know, after all of these, um, you know, variations on a theme, if you will, um, 
when the Wii was announced, we were all wondering, what's the next controller going to be? What's the next innovation that t Nintendo is going to bring to us? And then we saw this. And I have to admit, the first time I saw this, I did not know what to make of this. I, and in some ways, I still don't, you know. It's, it's kind of weird playing Zelda like this and, you know, being okay with it. But now that I'm getting used to having basically my two hands almost independent of each other, I kind of like this a little bit more than a traditional controller. Not so much for the, the, um, the motion controls, but I like, you know, I can, like, relax with my arms apart from each other, which through the power of widescreen you'll see, you know, and not have to sit here like this all the time. But, um, you know, some definite innovation here. I don't think this was, you know, I still don't think this is, you know, a great controller because you're supposed to be able, which I can't do it right now because I have the, the Wii Motion Plus because I'm playing Zelda, but you're supposed to be able to hold it like this and play like Nintendo games on the, the Wii U, or on the Wii U, Jesus, um, on the Virtual Console. And, you know, you play um, Metroid like this as well, and then you flip to go to the first person screen. But um, I never liked using this as a base or a standard controller. It just never worked for me. Um, I do, however, really like the nunchuck. The nunchuck really uh, contours to your hand. I never have a problem with the, the getting the C or the Z button there and the control stick. While I usually always have a problem with control sticks in that I feel like I'm pressing straight forward and you know, I'm actually pressing to the side for some reason, which I always do in Zelda. I'm always doing the auto jump, and I think I'm going straight forward, and then he's just like, ha! Off into a fire pit, and I always die. But, um, you know, that's neither here nor there. The only real problem I have with this as a controller is that it always it uses batteries, and um, it seems like it's always draining the batteries. When I have the, the Wii off, you know, the batteries just die really fast in this, and it makes me wonder if it's always draining from the batteries in some kind of standby mode, waiting for you to hit the power button and turn it on. But, um, because whenever you hit a button there, I mean, it lights up. So, it always makes me wonder that maybe it's constantly draining batteries. So, that's the only thing I have wrong with this, and hopefully, when the Wii U comes out and we have that tablet controller, it can plug into the system and charge back up like you know these guys did that's a great feature to have just to plug it in your system keep playing while your you know controller recharges but um, definitely you know once again Nintendo innovated they did the Wii or the motion controls and then everyone's jumping on that now you know we got the PlayStation Move and to a lesser extent we have the Kinect which isn't really the same thing but it's kind of the same idea but, you know, they got a lot of flack for these motion controls for a long time, and now everyone's kind of trying to catch up with it. So, once again, Nintendo knows what it's doing. But you can't use this for everything. So, they came out with one of these. Which, when I got this, this is the uh, classic controller. When I got this, I really liked it. And um, I enjoyed it for a lot of things, but it always felt like it was slipping out of my hands. And, you know, it's basically a Super Nintendo... Dropping things. Basically a Super Nintendo controller with, you know, you got your dual sticks there. Which is essentially... So essentially you have a PlayStation 2 or 3 or 1 controller. Because Sony... If I do a Sony controller video, it's going to be really boring. So I probably won't. But, um... Anyway, basically you have a dual shock right here without the shock. So... But, um, you know, a very nice controller. I'm glad they made the D-pad really big again um, because, you know, a lot of the Nintendo controllers here recently have had very small D-pads. And um, it's very nice that this is nice and big again. The thing I don't like about it, I like this matte finish on the back. I don't like this shiny finish on the front. And that's been sort of the trend now with Nintendo stuff is that we're going to do a matte finish on one side and a, a shiny, glossy fingerprints all over it finish on the other side so hopefully Nintendo drops that and just keeps everything a nice matte finish I think that's a lot better of an idea but um, yeah while I was playing you know like um, Monster Hunter with this and playing Arc Rise with this it just 
it would never really comfortably fit in my hand. I mean, it's a comfortable controller when you're using the D-pad and the face buttons, but using the sticks are a little uh, awkward. And then, you know, you got your Z buttons here, which are really hard to hit. So I definitely know for Xenoblade, I wanted to get... Uh, fighting those cords again. I want to get the classic controller, which this is basically a PlayStation controller. I mean, let's not mince words here. You got your dual buttons up here now, which makes it a lot easier. You got your sticks a little farther apart, so they're easier to manage. And then you have the grips, which, mm, let me think about this. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say it. The Classic uh, Controller Pro is a little bit more comfortable than the DualShock 2. But um, again, it's got that glossy finish. I hate that. I have fingerprints and dust all over it. And the back looks pristine. So, But um, definitely a, a very comfortable controller. I can't wait to fire up um, Monster Hunter again and... I'll probably do a lot better in it now that, you know, this controller fits in my hands a little bit better. And I don't, I'm not constantly fighting to keep it in my hands. But um, I, I just wanted to do a video about Nintendo controllers because, well, I'm not a controller collector. I really do enjoy playing with a controller. I don't think I'll ever buy a Kinect. I might buy a PlayStation. No, I won't buy a PlayStation Move. There's no real games for a PlayStation Move that I want. But, um... I really hope controllers do not go away because it's it's been something ever since I can remember gaming. You know, my one of my first memories of gaming is holding this thing in my hand, and you know, you kids today might not know about Street Fighter Thumb, but um, talk to any old school gamer, and you know, playing Street Fighter on this thing, you know, you had a blister here, and then you had a blister here, and then you had a blister up here. Because you wouldn't stop. Because if you got a blister somewhere, you just flip your thumb over and use the other side or use the tip. And I, I remember having three distinct blisters on my thumb at one point in time from playing Street Fighter II Turbo on the Super Nintendo. So, you know, I really hope we don't get rid of controllers. I don't think we will. You know, the Wii U is going to have that tablet controller. We haven't seen anything from Sony or Microsoft, but I can't imagine they're making going to make the next system connect only or move only. It just, it, I don't think it'll ever work because some games just play better with controllers. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about Nintendo controllers. Um, I don't know if I'll do this for the other companies or not because like Xbox, there's only been three controllers and Sega's had a few controllers, but I don't have the 3D controller, so it's going to be kind of a boring video there. But um, I definitely want to talk about Nintendo controllers because they really do innovate every generation with their controls. And in a lot of ways, we would not have this, you know, without this, you know. So credit where credit's due, um, modern day controls, thanks to Nintendo. All right, that's it for now. I'll see you guys next video. Take care.